Today we're going to look at um, different layers and layer masks. A layer mask is basically a way of creating um, a non-destructive way of erasing part of one layer so you can see through it to another layer. You can see that in this example here. I've um, grabbed a picture of like a keyhole off the internet and then I've got that. Uh, uh, viewed through so you can see like um, the meadows and mountains in behind. And th these are, it's non-destructive, meaning that I haven't erased anything from the original image or cut anything away from the original image. So I could turn it back on if I wanted to. Uh, as an example, I can disable the mask here and now we can just see it's a boring old picture of a keyhole that we can't see through. And re-enabling the mask uh, hides that black portion of the keyhole um enable layer mask there we go and we can see through it again so if i turn off this layer you can see i was actually playing with a couple ideas one was like some creepy dude looking through the keyhole and in the end i didn't like that so uh i went just with the meadows but you can see if i turn off these other layers uh it's all non-destructive meaning the original images are not um affected in any way they're all just layered over top of each other and masks are used to see from one to the other um, and I did that by selecting the black area and turning on a mask. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. You can also, however, create layer masks more, that are more complex using vector shapes that you've created in Adobe Illustrator. So here you can see that same meadow scene with a cityscape. And I've applied a layer mask over top of my meadow scene. And let me disable the mask so you can see there's the original photo. Um, I dragged in my vector shape from Adobe Illustrator, turned it into a mask, and applied some styles. And you can see that both shapes are uh, not affected. And there's the original vector uh, smart object there. So I'm going to show you how to do those two things right now. Um, you could search the internet for some photos if you want, or if you have some photos that you want to play around with that you've taken yourself, you could do that as well. So let's start off with the keyhole um, example. I'm just going to go ahead and open that in Photoshop. I'm going to drag it here right onto my Photoshop icon on my Mac, and that opens up. Uh, when you're downloading photos from the internet, um, it's a good idea to search uh, and use the large setting so that you're finding high quality images, and then you don't end up with a pixelated mess. OK, so I need to select this black portion of my keyhole to create a mask. But before I do that, Right now, this is my background. I need to change this from a background into a layer. When we're, um, a background is a special type of layer that is at the very bottom of my layers list. And when I do that, I can't put another layer below it. So what I need to do is start by right-clicking where it says background and just say layer from background. That'll let me change the layer orders later on because I'm gonna wanna put something below it so that I can see through the keyhole to something else. All right, let's start by um, selecting this space. Now, there are a few selection tools we can use to do this. Uh, we've got a magic wand tool that's uh, supposed to select everything of one color, and it does an okay job, although I don't I don't love it. You can see it kind of selects uh, in and around um, a little bit too far into the actual object. And you can play with your tolerance here to, to see, you know, how we could change that. There's a tolerance of one, but you can see there's a lot of noise in there that it's selecting. And then if I crank that up to a tolerance of 50, it maybe selects way too much of the keyhole. Um, and the magic wand sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. There are also other selection tools. I'm going to show them all to you here real quick. Uh, you know, you can do a square selection, which obviously is not going to work in this case. Um, then there are circles, which we will use in a second. Uh, there's also this new tool, which is called a uh, object selection tool. And I'm going to give that a try. So basically, I draw a box around the object, and it does its best to approximate. And you can see, again, we're getting a little bit of uh, it's selecting too much of the actual outside plate of the keyhole for my taste. Um, so sometimes these selection tools work great. We're going to use a combination, though, of the ellipse marquee uh, selection tool and the uh, polygonal lasso tool. And I'll show you that in a sec. Now, I can select something. And uh, then you can sort of see the, the marching ants around what I've selected. Um, and I'm going to use the, the ellipse tool to select the circle part. And then I'm going to use a different uh, polygonal tool to select the bottom part. Now, you can see 
I can select and click and reselect again. Right now, uh, up here, there are different ways of selecting. You can select and add to your selection. So I could select once and then select again and select again. And you can see it adds to my selection every time when I have this one selected. This one subtracts from my selection. So I've right now, if I were to uh, copy this object and paste it, you can see I that's what I've selected. Let me get rid of that layer. So what I want to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to start with it on a new selection, and I'm going to try my best to select just the circular inside part of my keyhole. So I'll do that like this, and you can see that I've done an okay job on the right lower side and a terrible job at the top left. So what I'm going to do is I've just let go and I haven't moved my mouse. I'm going to click and click again. And that's going to mean that my my left bottom left is going to be a pretty decent selection on my top right. Uh, we're getting there. So I'm going to click and click again. And, and I'm just sort of going back and forth getting more and more accurate as I do it. So I'm pretty happy with that selection there. And I'll let go. OK, so we've got the circle at the top selected. Now we're going to uh, select this part at the bottom. And to do that, I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool. So I click there. And I want to make sure that it is adding to my selection, not starting a new selection. If I was to start a new selection, oh, I'd lose the other part. And then I'd be grumpy. So. I've un I did undo to get my selection back. Now I'm going to go here to add to selection. Okay. And basically what I want to do is just start clicking around the keyhole. And just selecting the inside like this bit by bit. So the way the polygon tool works is you can drag around and then every time you click, it sort of locks in that line. So until you click, you can you don't have to worry too much about you know your mouse movements. It's just make sure you're pretty accurate when you're clicking. I'm going to kind of come around the corner a little bit here too, and then inside you can just go crazy. It doesn't matter because it's adding to the selection. You can double click to end, and now you can see it's added to that selection. All right, so let's turn this into a layer of mask. Now there are two types of masks. One is uh, a mask to hide everything that's selected. And another mask is one that reveals everything that's selected. So let me show you the difference here. I'm going to go to Layer, Layer Mask. And let's start by revealing selection. What that's going to do is hide everything but the black. Now, that's not the type of mask we want here. So I'll undo Command Z. And we'll do the other type. So Layer, Layer Mask. And I want to hide the selection, just like that. This um, gray and white checkerboard pattern in the back just indicates that that is a transparent uh, transparent back there. OK, so now let's grab another picture uh, and put it behind. I'm going to go ahead and, and drag in my picture of the meadow, which is that one. I feel like this is either Switzerland or the Dolomites in Italy. Who knows, or Austria even. So let's go ahead and drag that down. I can, again, just drag that right onto my Photoshop icon. You can see it opens uh, in another tab over here. So there's my background layer there. I can actually right click this and say duplicate layer. And then I can say which document I want it to appear in. So there's, uh, it's probably this one. Unfortunately, I have several um, things named the same thing. So let's say keyhole and say, OK, let's see if that's the correct one. Yep, so you can see it's brought it over here. And now I want this to be underneath the other layer, so I'm just going to drag it down here like that. And now I want to move it around and kind of place it in a way that looks nice. And I'm also going to scale it down to make it smaller. So I'll say Edit, Transform, and Scale. And this blue bounding box shows me the size of the original image. We don't have to hold shift when we scale images in Photoshop. We do have to when we're scaling like a shape. The image will keep its aspect and ratio. And then I just need to decide where, where am I going to place it. And uh, maybe I'll have the mountain peak a little off from center. 
And I'm just gonna I'm gonna really drag this in so that it's just a bit bigger than the keyhole. And I'm gonna push the check mark when I'm happy with it. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a layer style to this lock um, keyhole um, outer layer to kind of create a drop shadow to the inside of my shape. So, uh, which I think is a little more what it would look like in reality. Let me just zoom in here to 150%. And then we'll apply our layer style. So I'll click my, it's important that uh, when we're playing with layers that we click on the layer we want to affect. So I'm going to change this layer here. I'm going to go to layer, layer style, and I'm going to choose a drop shadow. So you can see uh, I already have some settings here. By default, I think it'll set a distance of like six and a size of five or something like that. Um, and probably an opacity of, you know, in the 30s or whatever. So you need to play around with this. This is also the direction of the light. I can keep my distance really low. That way it creates sort of equal shadowing on all edges of this layer. And I'm going to crank up my size and increase the opacity of the shadow, meaning it's more opaque. So if I drag it all the way here, you can really see the effect it has but maybe I'll put it in the 80%, keep my distance at zero, and maybe increase that a little bit. So it sort of creates uh, a dark border around the outside of the image. And I'll say, okay, all right, I'm happy with that. The next thing I wanna show you how to do is how to use a shape to create a layer mask from Adobe Illustrator. So I've created uh, a few custom card shapes over here, as you can see, maybe I'll choose the heart this time. And I'm just going to right click and copy, or sorry, edit copy that shape. I'm going to come back over here into Photoshop. And uh, let's see the image we want to work with this time. Let's get, uh, I'll drag my meadow in. Actually, let's just jump to this one. There's the meadow picture there. And here I'll paste in my heart. And again, I get different, um, different ways of pasting in. A smart image. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it as a smart object, and I'll say okay. I'm gonna scale it up so that it fills a good portion of the image here, and center it as best I can. That looks good, and hit check mark when I'm happy. Okay, so there is my vector smart object. Now, you can see over here we've got our background layer again, and we've got our our vector. I, I'm going to take that background and I'm going to turn it into its own layer. So layer from background, just like we did last time, so that I can move it around and it's not always stuck at the bottom. I'm going to say just OK to all this. Now I'm going to click on this layer and right click it. And I'm going to tell it to select pixels. So what that's going to do is create a selection that matches exactly our shape. And you can probably guess what we're going to do from here. Um, I'm going to turn off this layer, but now we're going to create a mask of this scene. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my layer and say layer, layer mask, and I'm going to say uh, reveal selection this time instead of hide selection. So it's going to show me a heart shape of that beautiful meadow scene somewhere in the world. And, uh, and and you can see it's non-destructive. So again, I can, uh, if I want to change the shape I was using later on, or I have a different idea, I could disable the layer mask here and put it back to normal. Okay, and then uh, lastly, let's just bring in our cityscape uh, that we have, and I can just, I can actually just drag that onto here as well. Um, scale it up, so maybe it's a little bit bigger than the canvas we're working on. And then I'll push my check mark. And then finally, I'll drag that down below here. So now we see uh, our meadow in a heart shape, our city outside it. And then again, we can place it with uh, layer styles to really um, make it look, make it pop. So I'm going to go to layer, layer style, and let's try this time, uh, let's try an outer glow to see what that does. So here I'm applying an outer glow to my shape. Now I can change the color of the outer glow. There it's white there. You might want it to be orangey or bluey, but you can basically play around to see what does it look like. 
what color looks the best. How about red? It's interesting too. I might choose blue, maybe a darker blue, and I'll say OK. So there's my outer glow. I can play with a few things here. The opacity of the outer glow, again, just like with the shadow. I can play with its size here. I can play with how much it spreads here to get, uh, to get more of a halo effect. And the range and jitter as well. So I can play with all these things to kind of get the outer glow that I think looks cool. And then maybe I want to do a, a, a drop shadow or an inner shadow this time. Let me show you the difference. So a drop shadow would drop a shadow on the outside of the shape. An inner shadow would drop a shadow on the inside of the shape. And again, we can play around with those to get an effect we like. So that's how you can create layer masks where you can see from one layer to another. It's an interesting way of combining images in a non-destructive way, meaning we're not cutting up the piece. Uh, we can reuse them or change our mind later on. That's one of the reasons we use layer masks because we might have different ideas as we go through the creative process about how we might change uh, what we're doing to make it look different. And that's it. Have fun.